Hello everyone, this is Lisa Taylor of Beyond the Trail Community. Um, welcome to another interview with another brilliant colleague, friend of mine. Um, today I've got Coach Catherine of A Circle of Joy, who I know has been a blessing to many of you um, in the past. Um, our interviews have touched many of you. We've, we've had a good talk about spiritual crisis last time. And mm -hmm. today Catherine is joining us from Canada. Yes. New Zealand. Thank you, technology, for making this possible. Sorry for any technological glitches you may be seeing, like our, our video and audio slightly out of sync, but the whole thing's a miracle. So um, we're just we're just blessed <laughs> that we can get together and have this conversation and invite you into it. Catherine and I are going to talk today about fear. And fear. fear is kind of the last topic I'm dealing with in this blog series right now on the pain, talking about mm -hmm. our results of the tremendous pain um, yeah. that's brought into our life by this, uh, by betrayal trauma, by sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. And we ask that you would um, just, you know, sit back, grab a hot drink, put your feet up, and um, hang in there with us. You know, <laughs> feel free to leave comments on YouTube, or if you see this on the Beyond Betrayal Community website, which is www.beyondbetrayal.community. Just Jump right in and join the conversation. Tell us what you think. So, for now, Catherine of the Circle of Joy Ministries is going to um, going to tell us a little bit about fear, the, the advantages and the disadvantages. Catherine and I talked a little bit about this this morning. Um, there is a there is a time and place for for fear. Mm -hmm. what we were thinking. So, so tell me a little bit more about your thoughts on that, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. Fear. First off, thank you for having me again. I'm thoroughly enjoying your book, by the way. So thank you. Um, I love the way that God redeems lives, right? And uh, so I appreciate um, your vulnerability in writing the book. So thank you. Um, learning things from it. So uh, fear. Yeah, uh, we talk a lot. I think about how bad fear is. And um, but I'm I'm such a believer that God created all of our emotions, including fear, and there's validity in all of those uh, those feelings. Fear tells us something; it tells us we're not safe. There's danger, and um, we have to learn to listen to um, what our bodies are telling us. And um, so, yeah, fear is something that we have to embrace. Um, I believe we have to embrace it because I believe it's God telling us at this moment you're not safe, right? And uh, so I just want to talk a little bit um, before we get into you know fears per se, stories and and um, how I went through my fears. Um, I, I I think it's important for us to understand this incredible organ, and this is called our brain. Um, it is such a mystery, our brain, <laughs> and um, quite amazing. Um, and I think that if we can understand what's going on with our brain, I think we can show ourselves a lot more grace. So when we're healthy, when we've had a secure attachment style growing up, and uh, life is good, right? We actually live from our prefrontal cortex, right here right behind our forehead. That's, a, that's where we want to live. And our prefrontal cortex is responsible for higher cognitive functions like planning, distinguishing between right and wrong, determining what is socially appropriate behavior, uh, decision making, uh, producing insight. That is vital. And this is where we should be uh, living out of. That's where God designed us to live from. But when we've experienced trauma, or if we are dealing with addictions, we're not living from here. We're living from back here, where our amygdala is. And our amygdala is where fear is produced. It's right there. It's back here. So when I talk to women um, that are married to sex addicts or porn addicts, I'll ask them, you know, are you experiencing more fear um, now, the first thing they'll say is, yes, huge amount of fear. That's what trauma is. 
right? And our amygdala is saying, you're not safe. You're not safe. And so all of a sudden we feel, you know, um, ourselves becoming much more hypervigilant. Um, we find ourselves going through a lot of stress, anxiety, a lot of those um, emotions that come from fear. And it's because trauma has, has us living from back here rather than up here. And I think if we understand what's going on in our brains, we can understand that, okay, our brains are processing um, and that we're aware that right now our brains are working overtime to process what is causing us trauma. And that's why so many women are dealing with exhaustion, um, memory issues, um, um, you know, just exhaustion, unable to sleep. Um, you know, there's so many factors to living out of fear. And it's all because right now, you know, our amygdala is in full force. It's like, it's like the guards, you know, our military guards that live in our amygdala. They're saying, you've got to be on guard. Okay, you got to be on guard because you're not safe. And so that's why so many women, why we're talking about women that are going through trauma. It's because they're, the trauma has forced us to start living back here in the back of our brain, and we're not supposed to. Addicts are like that too. Addicts and addictions, and uh, addictions are those that are living with, uh, uh, that are addicts and women that are going through trauma are very similar because we're living out of fear more than out of joy. Okay, so I just thought that I would share that because that helped me to understand that my fear was okay. My fear was telling me that I'm not safe. And I needed to start learning to listen to me on how to make me safe. And that's part of the process of healing. So, yeah, Absolutely. So I guess as I'm writing about this, I'm realizing that there are justifiable fears and we need, yes. you know, this is a fear is a God-given mechanism. Yes. As, Beth, as you said, to tell us you aren't safe. You're not safe. Yeah. And what then needs to happen is something has to change. Yeah. You know, the We're in the can't can't say the same. Something something has to improve so that safety yeah. improves. Yeah. When you're in fear, you go into survival mode. There's a reason. That's a God-given uh, gift from God, right? Yeah. God-given. If a child is being abused. You know, they're so overwhelmed, they're so traumatized that what do they do? They will dissociate. Why? It's a God-given um, gift from God so that they could survive. Yes. You know, it's so protection. it's a protection. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. And as you say, it, it absolutely is a gift from God. And I think yeah. one of the most damaging things we can do is ignore our fears and try and stuff Amen. them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the the reality is is that we're not safe. Our children maybe yeah. aren't safe. Yeah. And and you know we are trying to to ignore God's protective mechanism. Yes. And our, we're going to be fighting our bodies, and then you are going to end mm -hmm. up really exhausted. I know. I know. It's it's already exhausting if we're going with it, because of the you know nightmares, panic attacks, hypervigilance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you start stuff all that too and say, no, 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 I don't hear you. I've got my fingers in my ears, I don't hear you. You know, yeah. um, everything's fine. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, we, I think the stress on our, our bodies, on our on our, our mental state, on our emotions is actually our spirit even, I, I think is um, it's, it's all quite damaging. So the first thing I want to say is is if you know you're in crisis mode and you've just discovered things or you've just discovered something new, um, the fear is, is exactly what Catherine said. It's completely normal. Yeah. Um, all, of, all of the symptoms we were talking about, absolutely normal. Yep. Um, what we want to do is then say, what can we do to make ourselves safe? What do we need to be safe, to make our children safe? Yeah. Um, 
so that's um, it, it's a motivator. It yeah. can motivate us to take good, healthy actions for ourselves. Can um, I just add one thing to that too? While I remember, is you know, we have different coping mechanisms, many times coping mechanisms that we've learned growing up, right? Whether through our parents or what they taught us. And denial is huge. Denial is such a big coping mechanism. The problem with denial is you are self deny you're self rejecting, right? And you're not showing yourself the respect that you need to be safe. You're not worthy enough to be safe because you're holding on to something, chances are, might be an untruth, right? A lie, or just your need, right? To believe in something, right? Because it makes it easier. The reality, though, is that when you deny something that's going on, you're self-rejecting you're showing yourself the lack of respect um, to you, to your emotions, to your body, uh, to your spirit. And I believe that God mourns that because of his love for us. Right? He, he wants to protect us and he will give us what we need to be protected but it's a team effort, right? So if we stay in denial, God can't do anything with that. So we've got to allow ourselves to be open-minded, to stay grounded on what truth is. Because truth is what brings healing. Denial doesn't. Yeah, right? It just prolongs the pain. So beautifully put, Catherine. That's just so, so well said. Um, when I was talking with Shirley Martinkus about denial, you are mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. I see it chipping away at women's souls. Yes. And she talked about it damaging their identity. Yeah, all big time. We're all using the same, we're all using slightly different language, I think, yeah. to say the same thing. You are shutting down yourself. Yes. And I think, again, to bring it back to another point, you were talking about the, um, the amazing parallels between addiction and trauma. Yes. Uh, I think we can then develop a little a world of delusions and self-deception and lies yeah. that's actually quite similar to the little crazy world that, that the addicts end up developing if they go down the path for a long for a long enough time, and it's it's such a trap, you know. Oh yeah. Is trapped. Oh yeah. There is actually a lot of similarities. Um, with what's going on with our brain and what's going on with the addict's brain because we're both living out of fear we're both doing the denial right we're both you know not staying grounded you know we're trying old coping mechanisms that aren't working right and eventually something has to give and so what I tell women is look between you and your husband even though you're in trauma you're the healthier one so you're going to have to stick your door, your, your foot through the revolving door, step out and look at what is really going on, right? You know, ha find the strength within yourself for the love of God and also the love of your children, your grandchildren, the friends that love you, the people in your sphere of influence, you know, for the love of them, right? Um, take a step out and find out what the truth is. And will it hurt? Yes, but there's healing. There's healing and a transformation that will come if you take that first step. Right? Getting stuck is scary. Getting stuck is so scary. Yeah. Right? But it's a choice. It is a choice. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the things that I've been talking about in this series is that all these big emotions that just naturally come with, with mm -hmm. this discovery or disclosure. Um, the, the anger and the denial and the fear. These are all perfectly fine places to visit. You just don't want to live there. Yeah, you have to visit it. You have to visit those emotions. You've got to look at it. You've got to feel it to be able to walk through it. And I think the last time we talked a little bit about, about this, where you can't go over the emotion, you can't pretend to go around it, you got to go through it. That's the only way that Jesus seems to work, right? And that's why so often we have to go back to the trauma, we've got to look at it, we've got to feel it, we've got to, we've got to allow our prefrontal cortex to work through 
um, the pain and the trauma so that we can get out on the other side. There's no other, there's no magic prayer, there's no shortcut. This is the way that Jesus seems to work. And so we've, we've, got, we've got to trust the process. And I'll tell you, you know, for those of us that are coming through, that have come through the other side, it, it works. It's painful. Yes, it takes time. But if you do it, the rewards on the other end is amazing. It, it really is. And you learn. Trauma is going to change us. But you're going to learn so much more about yourself in the process. So. Yeah, it's, it's when I was just saying that exact same thing to one of the women in my group this week. And it's so not the message anybody wants. No, <laughs> this it's is not a pleasant one. Yeah, this is, um, and I think particularly today, in this day and age, we are an amazing pain-avoiding society. Oh, yeah. We've oh, got yeah. to pay for everything. You know, oh, you should yeah. suffer a moment's discomfort. You know, somebody, and, and not only that, it's somebody else should have to take care of it. If I'm in pain, yeah. so some expert should just take oh. this. And I'm afraid that at the end of the day, it comes down to me and God yeah. living in this. So, and yeah. it's horrible. It really, I mean, I don't, I don't, that's not to scare anybody from going through the process, but the reality is it, it's, yeah, you know, it, it can hurt like nothing you've ever experienced in your life. It can make given birth look like a picnic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's they, really not, it, it's not fun, but there is no other way through. And the, your other option is to let it control you and run your life and, and tear down your health. In, in every respect, your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health um, for the next two decades. Because yeah. I see women taking that option too, and I just want to cry out and say, you know, honestly, three months of grieving, you could be done. <laughs> this could be passed. You know, and I mean, like, yeah, and even if it's not three months or a year or two years or however long, because trauma, we're not just dealing with the trauma of our husbands. You know, there's been trauma in our past, right? The trauma with your husband is just, you know, it, it hooks on to traumas of the past, but however long it takes, it's so worth it. And I love, you know, the fact that you say trauma can actually have physical ramifications on our health. And it's so true. And I talk to women who are suffering now because they've been in this trauma for such a long time. And I love the fact that one of our coaches on um, A Circle of Joy, uh, Coach Christy, actually does a support group for, for just that, right? Um, how trauma affects our health. Uh, because it's it's everywhere. You go to a doctor and you're under a lot of stress. The doctor is going to ask, you know, what kind of stress are you in, right? Because doctors understand that stress has an influence on our bodies. And I believe a lot of our diseases, it's due to, you know, stress, trauma, abuse. You know, I, I, I so believe that. So fear is huge. And we don't want to get stuck in fear because it's so easy to get stuck in fear. Look around. You know, this world is full of fear. You put on the news, there's, it's, you know, I think today, it's going to date us, today there's a shooting in San Diego, another shooting, right? There's just fear. I, I actually went on vacation um, about two months ago. I'm a Canadian, went into the States to visit my brother. And the, I think I went through four levels of security at the airport. Four levels of security, you know. And I, you know, I've realized that that fear is so prevalent that um, our rights are being taken away, right? Because people are trying to find safety, but they're trying to find safety in easy ways. And uh, reality is that there is no quick way to work through this but you have to work through it. And, uh, and you know, part of that is just to stay grounded. Part of it is listen to what your body is telling you. Um, and if you start to feel fearful, I really do believe it's God's voice telling you something. And uh, so listen. Please, ladies, listen. Yeah. So. Two interesting points that come up from what you just said. Um, I, actually, I'm, I'm going to back up to something I said it. Um, just prior to this, I don't want to be misunderstood. While I think the bulk of our healing comes from 
our time spent with God and grieving, yeah. um, it makes an, it makes a world of difference if you have other women supporting you. Oh, big time. Yeah. So I mean, so I'm not. I am in no way saying all you have to do is shut yourself in your prayer closet and, and come out in three months and it'll all be good. You do need people to talk to. You do need yeah. people to validate you. Yeah. You do need. You often need advice and, and coaching and um, and help to get through this well. And and women who seek out those things are women who are way less likely to get stuck in any of those negative emotions. Yeah, yeah. I talk about that a lot in my support groups. Um, fear, and here is joy. We want to be here. And so, you know, you put the two together. For those of us that are living with a lot of fear, whether you're, you know, it's the addict or the woman that's in trauma, you know, um, reality is what really helps is, you know, making sure that the people in your lives, so for women, you know, your female friends that are a part of your inner circle are, you know, joy-filled women. Um, because joy, growing your joy cup, your, your capacity is going to help deal with your fear. That, you know, one of the tools that has transformed my life has actually been putting into practice um, being um, joyful, you know, learning how to have joy in my life and also just being grateful, showing appreciation. You know, those those three, I separate them into three, have been so huge. And I do encourage a lot of my women to start doing a joy journal or an appreciation journal. And every night, you know, it's their diary, you know, before they go to bed, you know, what are some of the things that you, you, you found joy in? And joy, to me, and I love the life model because they, they teach this, to me, joy is just being with people that you love to be with, that put a smile on your face, right? Lisa, I love when we do this, right? <laughs> I love it, and uh, it gives me joy. And, um, you know, so spending people, uh, spending time with people that give you joy and affirmation and just encouragement um, can really help what's lacking inside of you. So people coming in. And there'll be times when you're in trauma that I will tell people, and those friends that drag you down, put them on the shelf for a while. You really don't need them right now. You know, and I'm not trying to be cruel, but you, what you need right now is to fill your joy cup. And so, you know, start growing joy moments, right? Start finding things that you find enjoyable to do. And, um, and you know, get out a really pretty, uh, you know, journal and start um, writing down the things that you appreciate, the things that you're grateful for. It is surprising how that tool alone can really help you work through your trauma. So it worked for me. That has been a huge tool uh, for me. Well, it's funny. I think it's a huge answer to a lot of things. Um, my husband's currently reading Joyful Journey. I don't know if you've, you've yes. read that. Yes. Yes. Manual. And yeah. so he, exactly. So he's doing, yeah. he's doing this, and, and I'm yeah. seeing, you know, good stuff. And, and we, we're, as a family, we're reading um, Joy to Fly. So, no, Joy Starts Here. Oh, uh, great book. Great book. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's, it's like my, my younger son struggles a little bit with um, food addiction. And so okay. it just ministered to him amazingly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So this is the, it's, I mean, this is the answer to so many things. Oh I mean, yeah. You know, the, and it's funny because the book, the um, Joyful Journey book, is called Joyful Journey: Listening to a Manual. Yes. In a lot of ways, it's about um, it's about that connection with God. It's about it's, synchronizing with Jesus, right? And it's about listening to what Jesus has to say to you. And we keep believing that Jesus doesn't talk, right? And uh, so that that little that little booklet is just a gem. And uh, I actually share that with a lot of my women um, because I think it's so vital. And And the women that have chosen to sit down and take pen to paper 
and just write their joy, you know, something that they appreciate about Jesus, and then listen to him and just write down what Jesus is responding has been so life giving to them. And I remember one of my, my beautiful ladies um, was really having a crisis of faith with God. And so I really encouraged her to do that exercise. And she came back. And there was a transformation that happened. It was like, God, Jesus is here. And he told me he loved me. And this was the beginning of her journey back to God. Um, and you could see the healing that was happening because that was a missing component in her life, right? She felt so abandoned by her husband and abandoned by God. How many of us women have felt that at one point? in our journey and to experience God didn't abandon her and that God was speaking life into her you could see it on her face it was joy in her face for the first time it was just an amazing experience so joy going back to joy and appreciation and being grateful is um, to me such a key and it has been a turning point in my life some four or five years ago that was it so yeah okay. I'm going to put a link on the site to where you can find that book since we've just talked so much about it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I mean, you and I are really, really in sync with you know our ideas about the the core, the core to getting out of fear is that connection with God is oh. developing those joy bonds with, with Him and others. Yes. So the woman who's afraid of God at the beginning that that's the I think the first fear that needs tackling. Um, it, it always arises from a misconception about who God is, yeah. about, about the nature of, um, also the nature of, of sin and its effects in this world, because sometimes women approach this with a, you know, I'm a Christian, therefore I have a, a get out of pain free card, I, you know, and that's so not what the scriptures tell us, that's not what Jesus tells us, he said we will have trouble in yeah. this life, but he's got the answer. Here's my peace. Yeah. You know, not as the world gives. Yeah, and I think also, um, you know, I think our religious upbringing has something to do with how we see God. Also, who our dad was. You know, um, if your dad was very um, a, a disciplinarian, right, our concept of God will be that way too. Right, so we do have misconceptions as, as to who God is. So if something traumatizing happens in our life or something that is really painful, we think we deserve it, right? There's that mentality, we deserve it. Or, you know, for a lot of addicts. So my husband has this belief, and I wish he didn't. It breaks my heart. But I think a lot of addicts believe this, that, you know, um, that God really doesn't love me, and if he did, um, he would um, heal me from this addiction. So God doesn't really forgive. I've done the, you know, unforgivable sin. Um, I'm not worthy enough. You know, it's all these lies, right, which we know where these lies are coming from, but it ha is so deep-rooted in their belief system, and their addiction just keeps adding to that lie right yeah. and so yeah I just don't think it's women that are dealing with their misconceptions of God it's also the addict too so again similarities right and so you know again going back to okay what is your belief about who God is is it based on facts you know is it I look at the Bible as a really a, a, a love a, a love book for us it's a love story between God and us. And, uh, you know, there's scriptures galore that talks about how God f feels for us. Um, but there's also scriptures to help us um, deal with, um, for example, we're talking about fear, right? My most favorite scripture, because it's short, right? Trauma brain, not good in memory, uh, remembering. So Psalms 56.3. I love this. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Simple scripture, you know, and I know there's lots of others, other scriptures that talk about fear. But here God is saying, you know, my child, you know, if you're afraid, trust me more. 
I'm here with you. You know, and I think that's what Jesus is trying to tell us all the time is he's right here. You know, the very word Emmanuel, right, is God with us. Do we believe that God is here when we are, you know, in a fetus position in the bed, you know, hiding from the world, crying to the point that your heart is breaking. Do you believe that Jesus is on the bed with you just stroking your hair and just saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. Right? Do we believe that about who Christ is? If we don't, then all I can say is your concept of God is not healthy because God is truly there with you. Whether you feel him or not, he is there, and I love doing the Emmanuel prayer uh, because Jesus, you know, when I do an Emmanuel prayer with a woman who's going through trauma, um, you know, we connect the woman with Jesus in a memory that Jesus gives them, and then we then Jesus takes them back to trauma, and what does he do? But simply show them number one, he's he's he was there, he was really there. And he shows them that he was there, and then he reveals them the lie that came with that trauma. And, you know, it is the most unbelievable experience for anybody to go through an Emmanuel prayer because they start to realize, wow, if God was in that situation, then God must be in this situation and that situation. All of a sudden, truth starts to build. And then we can look at, you know, when I'm afraid, I have to trust that God is here too in this situation, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And I love Emmanuel Prayer too, and I, I do it with people. And, and, and you've probably picked up in, in the book, I detail some of my, I call them visualizations around Jesus. Well, yes. that's, I learned how to do that in, in learning Emmanuel yes. Prayer. Because yes. Emmanuel Prayer is often you start with somebody else who, who can help guide the process while yeah. you learn it. But then you take it away, yeah. and it becomes a whole new related way of relating to God on a regular basis, oh, that's and um, and that's that's what the intention. I, I, from what I understand, that's what the intention of of the authors. Um, yeah. If you don't know manual prayer, it's um it's a form of theophostic prayer. Um, it, it has some differences that I think make it a little bit more powerful. Yeah. And um, you can learn more about it at the Shepherd House website, if you journal, probably Manual Prayer and Shepherd House, or um, Carl Lehman. Carl Lehman stuff, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll probably get connected pretty fast, and, and they make a lot of stuff available low-cost. There's a low-cost book that you can get on how to do Manual Prayer. They also have a free PDF. And that, that's what I started with, and I had yeah. nobody to take me through it at, at originally, and, and God and I just fumbled our way and, and worked it out. And it was, it was I mean, the reason... These ex these visualizations from my book it's because these were the most powerful healing moments in my journey, yeah. Um, yeah. from from a very very low place. Um, yeah. It saved my life. Yeah. I, and, and I've told that to people. It literally saved my life. Oh yeah. So it's it's just so and and it's, I know Catherine will will agree with me on this. Just just backing up to some of what she said. If you are having fears towards God, doubts about Him, your trust feels shaken in Him. That is so normal. Yeah. Like, don't feel at all belittled or condemned. We've been there, and I'm sure she Catherine's going to share with us <laughs> that she's been there. Um, it's understand though. It's the healing process is to begin, and sometimes all all you have to do at the beginning is say, you know what, I don't trust you. I'm yeah. actually going to put you. Um, if you if you do love me, you show me. Yeah. And, and I, a number of us have done that. And have been amazed at what's come out of that. Oh yeah, scream at him. Do whatever you need to do, but start the dialogue. Just start telling him how you feel, because God want God just wants wants you to tell him. You know, God God's big enough. He he can handle it. And that's what I did. I would go in the word, woods and just scream at him. I would say some pretty nasty things, as I shared in in our last uh, video. And uh, you know. God just wrapped me up in his arms, you know, and he started the process of bringing healing. And can I just share, just, just to touch on that, 
um, you know, that if we uh, find ourselves in a, in, in a place of trauma because of our husbands, right, and their sexual behaviors, and uh, we're in trauma, and we're angry at God because we're, we're asking all the why questions. Why did you allow this? You know, why didn't you stop that? And you're having a crisis. Um, all I can say is you're going to need to work through that for your healing sake. You can't avoid that and think that as long as I can deal with my trauma in all the other places, I'm going to be fine and ignore the God factor, it's not going to work. You have to deal with the God factor. And, uh, you know, so I know for us at, at Circle of Joy, we're starting a new group dealing with Crisis of Faith. And I have found this fabulous book and I'm going to do a little bit of a plug here, um, which is, okay, um, it's called uh, Towards a Deeper Walk. And again, I love this book, um, bless, um, you know, the author Marcus Warner. Um, I've heard him speak. Um, he's associated with Life Model. And um, again, the whole joy thing. And But he really does um, talk about um, walking, walking, this with God and going through the steps. It's a great book and uh, we deal with a uh, crisis of faith when you're in trauma because it's a reality. I've discovered with women, you're going to have two types of women. Women who are going through trauma and are leaning into God, they're leaning into Jesus, or those that are saying, I'm angry with you too. You know, I don't know if I can trust you either. And so for those women that are going through that, I don't know if I can trust God anymore, you know, come talk to, come talk to me. Um, because, you know, we understand. We've been there, right? And, um, and maybe this support group might help you. I know it'll help you um, work through that as part of the healing process. So, yeah. well, I'm going to put a bit of a weird challenge out there, too. Um, I'm sure that it, sometimes we get women who watch these videos because there just isn't a lot of resources out there for women suffering from this trauma and they may feel like oh, I'm not a Christian, it's never any, been anything I've been interested in or maybe mm -hmm. it was part of my childhood or you know something like yeah. that. I, I once had a prayer or two you know, back when I was 10. Um, that, that doesn't matter. You, are, you, you don't actually have to be a believer to undergo a spiritual crisis. And um, a lot of women have found themselves connecting with God in all new ways yeah. as part of this journey because they, they do suddenly become aware of their spiritual self. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I yeah. mean, we are Christians. We, we're biased towards that. But if you, if you listen to us talk, you'll, I think you'll, you'll catch on that we're not really, we're not pushing religion here. We're pushing an incredibly beautiful and organic relationship with God, who we believe reveals himself in Jesus Christ, um, we are totally open to, and I'm sure Catherine, as she leads this group, is open to just wherever you're at in yeah. your journey. Just, just come in and yeah. see what happens with the next steps. You know, yeah. and, and we trust God to, to take each of his children through this process. And we understand we don't, there's no formula, there's no magic um, wand to wave and everyone's going to then just start walking on the same path. Um, everybody's journey looks incredibly different, um, when, especially when trauma is their launching point. Yeah. Into it. But uh, God's got something beautiful for you. He, he does love you. He is with you when you are, when you are sobbing to the point where you think you're going to vomit and you know, you've blown your nose on all, every towel and sheet and everything around you because you needed something bigger than a Kleenex was going to provide. Um, he, he gets that and he's there. Not only is he there, he's there and he cares. He cares deeply. He cares like a good parent cares. Yeah, and, yeah. and there's, there's comfort in knowing that there is something bigger than you through this. Right? There's just comfort in knowing that there is something bigger than you in the midst of that deep, dark tunnel that you find yourself in. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I have women that, you know, don't have faith or have had faith when they were a child. 
um, all the way through to having faith and leaning into Jesus. And, uh, you know, trauma is trauma, right? We're all working through trauma. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's vital. Right. Thank you so much for joining us here at Beyond Betrayal Community as we discuss the issue of fear. This is Lisa Taylor, and I've been talking with Coach Catherine of A Circle of Joy. Next week, I'll be posting the second half of this interview, where Catherine shares her story of moving from what she terms paranoia fear to peace and joy. I hope you enjoyed listening, and you'll join us for more next week.